In this video, I'm going to show you this really awesome technique that utilizes both Photoshop and After Effects to add some really awesome and cinematic camera movement to your static photos. So let's get right into it. So once you've chosen the photo that you want to use, you want to drop this into Adobe Photoshop. And once you're inside of Photoshop, you want to begin by isolating the person from the background. So we want to first start by selecting the quick selection tool and then you want to unpadlock the background. So we'll press the padlock icon and select the quick selection tool. Now we're just gonna draw a mask around the person in the photo. If you want to decrease the size of your brush, then please feel free to do so. But you just want to draw a mask around the person in the photo. And once you've done this, you just want to hold command C and command V. And this should copy that person into their own layer. And as you can see, if I turn off the original background layer, that person has been successfully copied into their own layer. Now we'll turn off layer one, and then you want to hold a command on your keyboard, and then select the thumbnail from layer one. This should load up that mask one more time, so the mask that we just created should now appear around your subject. Now from here, we basically want to remove this person from the background, so we're gonna go up into select, modify, expand, and we're gonna set the expansion, to 30 pixels, we'll press OK on that. We'll go back into select, go down to modify, and this time we'll select feather. We can keep the feather on 10 pixels this time. And then we'll go into edit, go down to fill, make sure content is selected to content aware, and select OK. And the computer will take a second to fill that in. Now I'll command D to remove that mask, and as you can see, if I toggle the layer one back on and off again, you can see we've removed the person from the original layer and isolated them into the own layer. But the problem is content aware is good, but it's not perfect. So as you can see, it's completely ruined this lamppost and there's some distortion in the photo that we need to clean up. So we're gonna go over to the clone stamp tool on the left of Photoshop. It will decrease the size of the clone stamp tool. And we're gonna use the clone stamp tool to completely get rid of this lamppost. So the way the clone stamp tool works is you want to hold option on your keyboard and paint over a clean part of the image. Then you want to go over to the part that you want to remove and deselect option and paint over that part. And that will take that copied part that you just copied and paste that onto the part of the image that you're now drawing on. So we're going to use the clone stamp tool to get rid of this ugly distortion on top of the lamppost. So copy part of the sky and you just want to draw over the lamppost where that distortion is occurring. So there should now be a missing chunk of lamppost and obviously we need to go ahead and fix this. So we're gonna go up to the top left of Photoshop and select the polygonal lasso tool. Making sure layer zero is selected, we want to draw a mask around the upper part of the lamppost. Now we'll hold Command C and Command V to paste that into its own layer and we'll just pull this down to match up with the lamppost. Don't worry if you go over that sign at the bottom, that's completely fine. And once you're happy with the positioning of that, you can just go ahead and press enter. Now from here, we're gonna go into the eraser tool and we're just gonna clean up the edges of this copied mask. So go into the eraser mask, reduce the size, make sure the hardness is down to zero. And then we're just gonna draw around the edges of that newly pasted in mask. So we're just gonna get rid of that ugly rectangle box. And once you're happy with the look of the lamppost, we just want to get rid of the sign. So we'll go back into the clone stamp tool, reduce the size of the clone stamp tool, and we're gonna copy the sky and paste that over the sign. Now, obviously you won't have the exact same photo, but if there is something in your background that has distorted, you can use the process of using the clone stamp tool and copying and pasting elements within the photo to try and recreate a really clean background. It's super important that we get a clean background because we're going to be moving the person in the foreground. Now, once you're happy with the look of the background, we just want to go ahead and we want to merge all of the layers of the background into one layer. So select everything that you've just created. So in my example, that is the copied lamppost and the background. You want to right click, making sure both are selected and go up to convert to smart object. Now the person is one layer and the background is another layer. Now we need to go ahead and we need to export this for After Effects. So we'll go File, Save As, make sure this is a Photoshop format, and then save this to wherever you like, just make sure you remember. 
So I'm going to rename this to one dot bat flip, save that into a PSD, and then we'll go into Adobe After Effects, create a brand new composition. I'm going to change the width of this to 1080, making sure the height is also 1080, and we'll press OK. Now we'll go into our finder and we'll drag that backflip photo, the one that we just exported from Photoshop, into After Effects. And this warning box will come up saying import kind layer options. You want to select the import kind to composition and the layer options to editable layer styles. It's really important you select these very settings because otherwise it will merge everything into one flat image file. So with those settings selected, you want to go ahead and you want to press OK. And then double click on the bat flip composition and inside of the bat flip composition you want to copy layer 1 and layer 2 and paste them into your new composition. Now feel free to reposition this, reduce the scale, increase the scale, change the position, rotation, whatever you like, just get these into their positions. Now we're going to press S on the keyboard on the background layer, so that's layer 2. Create a brand new keyframe at the very beginning. We're going to scroll all the way to the very end and we're going to increase the scale up to around 88, 89. So you should have a slow zoom in on the background. Now we'll select layer 1 and press R and that's going to load at rotation. Create a brand new keyframe on rotation at the very beginning. Load at position as well by pressing P and create a brand new keyframe on position. We'll scroll to the very end and we'll pull the rotation to negative 18 and update the position. Even though this is a still photo, we're trying to recreate the movement of the move itself. So in my example, I'm doing a bat flip off the wall and if I was doing a bat flip in real life, I would flick over, I would rotate and my position would change. So I'm recreating that movement inside of the photo to make this look really realistic. Now, once you're happy with the position and the rotation, once you're happy with all of that, you want to close down the transform tab, making sure layer one is selected. You want to go up to the puppet tool and then you want to start putting points on all of the joints of the person in the photo. So as you can see, I'm putting a point on my ankles, my knees, my hips, my elbows, my wrist, my shoulder. I put one on my neck. I'm just adding as many points as I can to add a little bit of movement into this photo. Now, once you've added all of those points in, you want to go into the effects, puppet, mesh one, deform, and then you have all of your puppet pins there created. So if I select puppet pin 12, hold down shift and select puppet one, that should select all of them. We'll press the drop down arrow and then we'll put all of these keyframes that were just created when I made the points and drag them to the very beginning. Now we'll scroll the cursor to the very end of the video and we can go ahead and we can change the position of all of those puppet points to follow the movement of the backflip. And now once you've adjusted the positioning of all of those different points, you can see we've got this really awesome movement happening within the photo. And now there's just one more thing that I want to add to this to really take this to the next level, and that is adding a subtle lens flare at the front of the photo. So we'll go to Layer, New, Solid. We'll rename this to Flare, make sure the color is black. Go into Effects and Presets, search for Lens Flare. Drop Lens Flare onto the black video. We'll change the lens type to 105 millimeter prime. We'll pull the positioning up to the very right. Change the blending mode from normal to screen. We'll increase the flare brightness to a point that you're happy with. So I'm going to increase it to around 180. Then we'll pull the cursor head to the very beginning, create a brand new keyframe on flare center. Scroll to the very end of the shot, and then we'll just change the position of the flare center. So I'm going to move this over to the left. And when we play this back, with the movement of the background, the movement of the subject, and the movement of the lens flare, we've created this really awesome and really dynamic photo effect. And there you go. That is how you easily add digital movement to your photos 
right inside of Photoshop and After Effects. And there you go. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you tomorrow for another brand new video. See you there.